this is part seven of Grey Patriarchy. Uh, this will probably be the last time I do re read alouds because um, I didn't get any views for the last video. If I don't get any views for this one, I'm going to go back to regular commentary. Too bad, so sad. Go fuck yourselves. I don't want to. I don't want to waste my breath. You know, I'm going to do as much as I can, but I'm not going to overdo it if people aren't going to see the video. So let's go ahead and do part seven. Uh, so Rosemary and Gino are captured and they're held hostage. So it's about territory groups, political groups fighting one another. In this case, you have Oyea and Kamau that are the Skull Bashers, an extreme football team. I based them on the NFL Blitz and Battle Ball, the board game. And just like stud people playing like fire football. So uh, we're going to continue from here. I can see your son making the finger spelling for the word A-L-L. -L, then making the index finger uh, across the neck. Yeah, such decisions of a child. Thank you, Kamau. Now, Den. And now I can see all of you are beyond saving. Dark blink, blink, green blotches on your skin. Light blue coloring of the eyes. Louis signs of laryngitis. It doesn't matter. We can do anything we want. We're just as intelligent. Not in mere months you can't. It's not about racism and shit. The alien virus from Zetroy can't be reversed or cured or fixed or none of that shit. We, Gino can give you painkillers and blood transfusion kits, but we can't give you bases for it. And Intenso Yeo slowly approaches a chained Rosemary. Do you understand us? My son and I were victims of a bad government in Zambia. My husband died and let me his only legacy, even if he cannot hear you. Primitive ways of village life was how, was how we grew and pros prospered. We are here as warriors fighting for a new, de new democracy, new the spirit of Africa, the legacy of, which is a flawed government ignoring the needs of a modern society, but to better serve the military. We can't go back to biblical times when figuring out law and orders up in the air. You know, no, 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 better than us. We all sick and dying by, by y'all just playing with yourselves while we're getting shit done. We, the three of us, ain't dying. Oh, boogity boo, you know that. We're just not. Some of us are immune. And still, some of us are not dying but can run a better government. Dumb dilly crazy. Kamal makes a sign of a mouth opening and closing with his left hand. Yeah, kid, I got that. If you're so brave and so healthy, you come up with a new way of living. No, I'm not a leader nor a follower, just a survivor. Oh, yeah, yeah stares at Rose for three seconds, saying nothing until... I see now you are beyond co cooperation. Then we have no choice. Young Concordo, I agree. And would you look at that? Well, this is a book, but I could see them approaching all of us. Five men, no, it's three men, Latinos, a Russian goddess and a robot shaped like a soccer ball with a head and multiple appendages. So these are the characters. Briefly, this is Alfredo Gomez, based on the real boxer Alfredo Angulo Lopez, El Perro. This is based on the Latino comic book nerd, a guy I knew in school, uh, Francisco Villanueva, with his ca talking cat. And uh, so it's based on a chubby Latino nerd kind of guy with glasses, kind of a beta male you'd see at comic book stores and he loves stuff and he loves collecting video games and comics. Then you've got, this is based on Pablo Picasso in his, in his last years. Uh, he's called Pablo Montenegro. He's like fighting for immigrant rights at the border. And then we got, this is based on Natasha Ragozina or Natalia Ragozina, uh, the Russian goddess kickboxer in Russia. Uh, her name here is Morotok. And this is just based on BattleBots and Dr. Robotnik and just weird shit. And he's called um, Vengabot. So that's these guys. So Alfredo Gomez is a former heavyweight boxer and a friend of mine. A client in my old business venture to be exact. His weird overweight, overweight cousin Francisco is a comic book geek who jerks off to Robotech novels. And then there's his talking cat. Yes. And then their grandpa, Pablo Montenegro, a hero against the border patrols for the, and for Mexico. And Moratok, the Russian mixed martial artist in Venga, created by the smartest Mexican engineers. 
Trusted warriors' costumes honoring the Mexican and Russian flag, they are simply known as the Mexican militia. This is not your concern. Leave now while you can. Now she's speaking in Russian here. This is Cyrillic. Idi ka chato. Chato. Idi ka chato. And she's saying, go to hell. And Francisco's like, um, yeah, you're hurting our friends. We're not going anywhere. Pablo's speaking in a, in a Mayan vulgar, Zmelen uh, Mata, which means go fuck yourself, I think. Vengapat fighting. Alfredo speaking in Spanish. Si Rosa, si los ayudamos a las palabras, como se dice? So if you help us, you know, he's trying to say, like, how do I say this? So Francisco's like, he's basically trying to say that if we help free you and your friends, we, we, if we can establish the symphony hall as our base, I don't know. We will also need access to your underground network through the igloo. We can talk about that. We just got to work together. Verici, I think it's, I think she's saying, Verici v tokchu. Verici, Verici v tokchu. Which is, um, Oh no, I'm sorry, verni. I'm sorry, ver I'm trying to remember this. This is H is like a n like an N sound. Ver verni v tokcho, which means um right, exactly. And Rosemary says Rosemary says, yeah. Francisco, Alfredo, and their crew and I, we exchange nods of heads before Francisco and his cat Valiant comes to free us. But you'd know it, oh yeah, cock blocks the way. You're not freeing anyone until we settle this matter when everyone wins. Where everyone wins, Katie says, "Let them go." That's Katie Brown. Now Katie Brown's based on the comedian Katie Brown. That's Katie Brown, the running back for the Skull Bashers. My memory is faint because I'm not a fan, but it comes back to me. Believe it or not, the Skull Bashers were once a team of extreme athletes who used death-defying stunts, not unlike the World Wrestling Federation, to compete in actual sports called the Football Fighting Federation. The Skull Bashers, led by Oyea, who is the star tackler. Kamal, her son, is the quarterback, and Rascal Brown is the kicker for the events. Our politics, our points of view, our special interests, like, they don't matter anymore, even when the worst has happened to us. Like the rest of her clan, Katie is dressed in platinum football armor with weapons concealed, but she has also her, has her face concealed in a skull-shaped helmet. She doesn't need to remove it because Gina and I can tell she's awfully sick. She does anyway. We looked out for each other with open arms and charity when the bombs and disease hit, when we were just surviving. Now that we know what sickness we're dying from, what Cetra was capable of, what the humanity of America is poised to do, what the fuck are we? I don't like this. She walks slowly towards Oyea, Kamau, Roth, and the militia like a lost, scared child looking for her mama. Clearly she's up to something, her hands covered in folding arms. We aren't meant to be one thing or another. America was meant to be all things. Just because the president is dead, the capital's wrecked, and the charter is turned to ash doesn't give us the right to decide for other people. She starts crying, revealing her face in the sunlight, all her symptoms out in the open. Only angels can rule us now. Let me see where we are. Okay. We've got two more pages. Her arms, her hands out, two grenades. Katie, don't. Boom. You know, and then there's a smoke. Grenade. Smoke everywhere. Can't see. Eyes water. <coughs> <coughs> Roth. Gino. Gino. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, shit. What? The smoke clears. There are people dead. Katie. Roth. I think. I thought I saw him move, but I know two others are dead. One of them is Pablo, the old member of the Mexican militia. And Camau. Camau. Abuelo. Alfredo and Francisco kneel to embrace their grandpa. Oh, yeah, yeah, likewise, her son. Come on, no. If Katie had shot herself in the head with a gun, this fight would have ended with a quiet, however temporary truce. But now she's made things worse. This is going to escalate. You better motherfucking believe it. Moratok's face turns to a quiet rage before slowly losing her temper. She grabs Oye from off her son. We, Durak, you idiot. And then, okay, last page. Pow! Moratok gives a right jab to Oyea's face. Being in her nature, the Russian goddess throws punches at the African warrior, beating her to death. Someone pushes her off. Hey, leave her alone. Joe Ping, 
the heavy tackler for the Skull Bashers. Now Alfredo's mad. That's based on an actor, by the way. Alfredo says, La culpa es suyo. The fault is yours. Wham. Whoa. Alfredo gives a left uppercut to Joe's huge round size. Now it's getting out of hand. Alfredo gives jabs and hooks to Joe and two other members of Skull Bashers. Moratok shoves Oye Wambui to the ground while giving two kicks to two other Skull Bashers using the ground as leverage. Fengabot unleashes taser, mace, drill hammer, and boxing glove appendages out of its roaming body to go after the other football players. Francisco fights Rascal Brown, though it's mostly Rascal in a headlock while trying to kick Francisco's shins. Valiant the talking cat claws and scratches two of the running backs. It's a numbers game. Nine football warriors versus four people and a cat. This chaotic, super, stu silly, stupid fight. The grenade smoke not yet settled. What is all this about now? Stop! Stop it now! People are dead! So that's uh, going to be it for now. It's just such a violent fight. But Rosemary is going to meet her benefactor who's been giving her 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 weapons, her helicopter, her bike helicopter, her ways of survival. And that's going to be tomorrow. Until then.